Turkey is a country like no other. If you're watching this, then you're here to research your upcoming trip to Turkey. Well, look no further. We just spent the last 14 days traveling through eight of the most popular cities in Turkey. Now, although we did this trip in 14 days, we actually recommend you do this itinerary over 21 days. In this video, we'll share with you what you should try, where you should go, and what you should skip. But most of all, what can you expect to pay? So let's begin our trip where most travelers start, Istanbul. She's already exhausted because we're hiking up this hill. There's a lot of hills in Istanbul. So our first stop here in Turkey is actually one of my favorite spots and we've come here to try Bayram because Catania has not had it before and I absolutely love it. And then this right here is the famous Bayran. Alright guys, that was an amazing breakfast. That cost actually a total of 66 liras. So I'll put the conversions right down below for you guys so you guys know how much it costs. Absolutely recommend that guys. I will put the name of the place up as well on the screen for you. So if you're coming here to Turkey, definitely try that soon. Love walking through these little tiny alleys and these little tiny streets. They got everything here, selling from arts and crafts to bags to shishas, and even uh, got the, yourself a little food market here as well. So it's a lot of things to see and a lot of things to buy in this area. We've now entered the Grand Bazaar, which pretty much just looks like an entire maze. We were just walking around circles in the, in, on the outside of it and it looked big, but it looks even bigger on the inside. Good morning. Oh, thank you. Eucalyptus tea, anti corona tea. So good. Yeah. So we managed to escape the Grand Bazaar. We managed to run away with only spending. Which is 45 liras. Yeah, we spent 45 liras. So whatever the conversion is, I'll put it down below. But it's it's a maze, man. We tr we tried to get out of there. We were looking for the exit. You couldn't find it. I mean, they literally make it a maze on purpose so that you can't escape all the stores. Small, big. Huh? Small. 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 Oh my god, I'm so scared. Do I need to s just swallow it? Yeah, or? just swallow it. <laughs> oh my god, this is really good. I really liked it. I think we get eight each. Um, four each. Four each or five each. And it costs 20 lira. Yeah, if you guys are coming to Istanbul, you guys must try those. Those are delicious. And they only cost 20 liras, which is roughly about, I don't remember, I'll put them down on the screen. But if you guys aren't familiar with those mussels, what they do is they, they cook the mussels with rice and different kinds of spices. And then they squeeze a uh, lemon on top of it. And the citrus just tastes so good. It's an amazing combination. If you guys have never had them, you must try them. When you're in Turkey, you have to stop off to, to get some Turkey coffee. It's uh, very essential that you must try it here. And just about at every corner, street corner, you have one of these stands here that sells Turkish coffee and they're really, really affordable. Uh, although I did not ask how much it cost because it's probably less than 10 lira, uh, pretty sure. So this guy is making the coffee right now. I've actually never seen how they make Turkish coffee here. So it's really cool to see. And uh, he's just cooking it over some coal here. And they've got about like 10 stands here all over the street here. So we're gonna try some Turkish coffee. The 
Check it out. That's hot. That's hot. But it's good. I think today has been uh, the most unprepared I've ever been for a flight, and yet it's been the easiest check-in ever. I think this is the closest we've been to the front. Yeah, just from initial impressions, flying into the airport here, the mountains look amazing and so do the beaches. So we've just exited the airport here in Antalya and we've rented a car from a company called Seas Geek. I'll put the name right above, but the overall cost was 3,600 lira for an entire week here in Antalya. And that includes like full insurance, everything, so we don't even have to worry about that. Look at the car. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. All right, this is our car for the next week. <laughs> gotten an early start to the day here in Antalya because of course our flight arrived so early in the morning around 7 a.m. and the first spot that we've actually come to visit here is in the southern point of Antalya it's just south of the airport it is called I believe the name is Dundon and what's so unique about this place is that this is a waterfall that flows right down into the ocean it's it's absolutely amazing and something you have to see just for yourself let me just show you guys. But yeah, one thing you have to know before you're coming here that people, they wake up really late. <laughs> yeah, nothing's open. Nothing is open, so it's really boring if you come here before 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. Yeah. So I think until then, we're gonna try to check into our Airbnb. The water is really loud because the waterfall is literally right next to me here. But uh, yeah, we're gonna try to find our Airbnb check-in and wait for everything else to open up before we continue our exploration around Antalya. So we checked into our apartment hotel here in Antalya and this is like the most local place we could be in and it's so beautiful, it's so cool to see. We have this huge park, like playground, local area right in front of our balconies. You've got a market right there across the street. Got kids playing right down here, people just hanging out, chilling out and these like beautiful European high-rise apartment building. This place is just so beautiful. I hope we can stay a little longer. We came to this restaurant called the Castle. The Castle, I think, the Castle Restaurant. Uh, I was recommended actually by one of my followers, so thank you very much for this place. Uh, the food actually turned out, looks like really good. Uh, I'm actually surprised. So what I got was a burger, and this thing looks huge. And we got some fries. So we're gonna dig in. This place is actually located right on the rooftop as well, so you got this amazing view of the rooftop as well and the water. The, the dinner actually cost us 112 lira just to give you guys an idea of what a typical uh, dinner night out here would be and that's roughly about 13 US dollars for the both of us 
and 185k yeah or 185k rupiah if you're indonesian watching so today is a brand new day guys we've just left antalya we are passing through this amazing beautiful little town on the way to kas i mean let me just show you how gorgeous this place looks If you guys are ever interested in coming to the town, uh, the name of it is called Kamlucha. It's really gorgeous. It really reminds me of my drive through California along the coastal highway. The water's just so, so blue. It's amazing. Can't really believe it. But we're, we still got about another hour and a half before we reach Kos. So let's head on out. This is the exact reason why we rented a car so that we can pull over whenever we wanted to. Off the road here, you've got these cliffs and there's even a staircase that leads down to the water so we're gonna go check that out. So if you guys look just right off this highway, you've got this staircase where all the cars are pulling off and just walking down. And there's a boat right here out in the distance. And then you've got people right down here swimming. Look how blue this water is. It's incredible. Let's go down this way. Doesn't look like there's anyone here in the water. Wow. This is awesome. amazing finding an incredible place like this just right off the highway and you just jump into the water and enjoy a swim and the water is just perfect it's so crystal clear so blue you can see the fish the rocks at the bottom of the water man it's just absolutely gorgeous couldn't believe it as soon as we uh, drove right off the highway you could see the steps to walk down into the water I was like I can't believe we're about to do this <laughs> absolutely worth it and it's free Gotta be careful crossing the street here, but yeah, you just park your car here off the side and walk on down. This place is called Finicky, I believe. I'll put the name right down here below for you guys. Guys, check this out. All of this is Kos. Is that how you pronounce it? It honestly looks like we've arrived at Monaco with the huge hills in the background, the mountains. It's absolutely stunning. And the drive here was just on another level. We were driving through some valleys, some mountains, and the beaches and the waters along the way are just, just so incredible, guys. But we've got about another maybe five ten minutes to drive down this valley and down into town below and uh, check out the town and get some food hopefully and uh, find ourselves some accommodation because we haven't even booked the hotel for tonight so hopefully it's gonna be not too expensive Guys, let me tell you, trying to find a parking spot here in Kos is just a nightmare. The roads here are so tiny, it reminds you like somewhere of like Monaco and there's no way to find a parking spot. I mean, you just try to drive around these tiny little streets and if you find something, you grab it immediately. Finally! I guess we've arrived for lunch here at a place called Bella Vita. It's got a really cool rooftop here, restaurant overlooking the harbor here in Kos. And uh, it's actually an Italian, so we're having Italian food instead of Turkish food today for lunch. But we've ordered some lasagna and spaghetti. 
if you want to come here and take photos, this is a great spot to go. They also offer a lot of boat tours and paragliding tours as well, as well as some trekking tours down here. Man, I'm um, diving. Diving, yeah, scuba diving. Uh, we asked for the price for a boat tour. For half day, it was a thousand lira for a private boat, and for a, a full day tour, it cost two thousand lira for uh, a for, full day tour. Yeah, for a full day private boat. But I think we're gonna plan on doing some island hopping in Fetier possibly. So hopefully we'll see that do that later, but. Now I think it's time to head out to the beach. Here I go again. I've lost my head in the clouds. Lonely covers my mouth and I'm waiting. You like to play pretend and let your words fall out. But I'm wiser now. Hotty, hotty. As you guys can see, there's uh, no other place to park. Go, 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 go. As you guys can see, this is the backup. Wow, it is beautiful. You can see it from here. Apparently, the beach is called Kaputash, and it is one of the most famous beaches here in Kosh. And wow, the water just. Stunning. That's all I can say. I can't wait to show you guys. So this is probably the busiest beach that I've ever visited and it just happens to be in Turkey but it's also one of the most beautiful beaches that I've ever visited. It even tops off Bali beaches. Uh, this honestly reminds me of a beach in Nusa Penida, Kling Kling Beach. Is it Kling Kling or even uh, Diamond Beach also. The water is just as blue as those beaches in Bali. It's, it's absolutely stunning but it's roughly about 6 o'clock at the time and uh, yeah, no checkpoint no bag check really just come down you could bring some beers if you want to and uh, just enjoy the day they do have uh, umbrella rentals and uh, lounge rentals as well I'm not sure how much they cost but can't be that expensive I assume and they do have a restaurant up above the beach as well as changing rooms and showers if you guys need a shower or changing room down here so you could definitely spend uh, the whole day here if you really wanted to by the way guys, this is what the sand looks like. It's mostly rocks, not really sand. But if you guys do plan going in the water, uh, the bottom of the water is actually like mostly just flat rocks. It's not really sand at all. You know what guys, for a beach that is completely free, not too bad, I would recommend coming here. Welcome to Butterfly Folly. So we're going to tell you details about how we get here today. So guys, we're now at Olu Denis. We're trying to catch a, a boat, like a boat or a ferry, to Butterfly Folly. It's in Fatia area, and now we're just trying a very local food here. <laughs> it's called gozlem. Gozlem means like thin pancake. Fill it inside with vegetables or meats. It's really good, and it's pretty cheap. It's um, like 30 lira. How long you want for? One hour, two hours? Yeah, maybe two hours. Two hours. Uh, how much shall I make for you? <laughs> well, for free. Yeah, yeah. why not? Yeah. You take my pictures. Yeah. Lots of pictures. Yes. Yeah. Okay, surprise coming up. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Two people, one hour to 600. Oh, but there's a public boat, yeah? Yeah, public boat is going. That's the one. It comes mm. at two, though, doesn't it? Uh, it's, yeah, 
another one comes at two, two. or two, half past okay. two. So guys, we are currently at the beach here in Ola Deniz. Uh, we're waiting for a boat because we're trying to figure out how to get to the Butterfly Valley because the only way down to the beach is by boat. You can't actually drive there, unfortunately. But uh, we've come out to the beach here and there's a lot of boat operators and tour operators and they're gonna try to sell you on a private tour uh, package. Uh, the guy that we just spoke to uh, gave us a quote of how one, much? one hour for 600 lira for two people. Um, and you get to go to like three spots, I believe, which is not a bad deal. Yeah, it's like it's only one hour. It's like 75 US dollars. And uh, but there is a second option, a much cheaper option, which is taking the public taxi boat, um, which leaves, I believe, at early around like 10 a.m. or 9 a.m and as well as 2 p.m. here from the beach. So we're gonna take the 2 p.m. ferry and uh, take it over there and then it takes us back here to the beach at Ola Denise around 5 p.m. So, and that costs only 15 lira, which is like a dollar and a half, I think. It's pretty cheap, pretty affordable. So we're gonna just sit around, wait and see until the boat comes around and check back with you guys then. Well guys, if uh, I look wet, it's not because I was swimming in the water, it's because we got completely poured on as we were entering the cove here. Luckily the sun has just come out in just about five minutes, so it's not too bad now, but it was pouring, like downpouring rain. Quintanya is not enjoying it though, she is soaking wet and hungry. Guys, this right here is called the Butterfly Valley. Now the only way you guys can actually get here is by taking a ferry or a private boat. We've chosen to take the public boat, which runs about, I believe at 10 a.m. and at 2 p.m. from the city called, I'll put it down here, I don't remember the name of it, but this is the beach here. It's actually not even a beach because it's not even sand, it's rocks. That's the only downside to this place. However, you do have these private boats. They look like pirate ships that come out here every day and you can go island hopping here. We've chosen not to do that. We've just chosen to come here uh, just for this specific beach. Overall, it's okay. It's not my favorite because the rocks are kind of painful, but you do have a few beach bars here on the other side and uh, it's actually not as busy as I expected it to be. However, only a 15 to 20 minute ferry ride here. 70 lira per person if you take the shuttle boat or 600 lira per person if you take a private boat. Oh, and did I forget to mention, you can camp here. Yes, there are hotels here and you can actually camp here overnight. So it was really nice time today at the beach. Um, we're carrying... All of our trash. Yeah, trashy because we couldn't find any trash bin over here. Um, but yeah, overall it was a really nice experience coming here. It was challenging and by the way, the water is really cold here. We've now driven about 10-15 minutes away to this abandoned village. We paid 25 lira for two people to enter this amazing city. And we're going to spend the afternoon exploring these abandoned ruins. The bad guys keep on winning. And the good guys keep on losing We're searching for the light in The darkness So ahead of me you can see the school And it's much larger than any of the other structures in this area I must say that I'm impressed that the structure is still standing in the condition that it is, being that this place is so old. Uh, roughly been dated back to 3000 BC. Looks like there might be a lookout point up ahead. Let's go see. Wow, photo please. It's so incredible to see how many buildings are here. 
uh, on, the, on the plaque that we read as we entered, it said that there were over 760 uh, buildings and structures here, which is crazy. And look at the viewpoint that we've just arrived at. Wow. Wow. This place is known to have been built around 3000 BC and uh, it was abandoned around 1923 as a result of the resettlement, uh, Greek resettlement. Uh, so I have no idea what that means really, except for maybe that um, Turkey reoccupied this area possibly and uh, the Greeks were forced to resettle somewhere else. But the city still stands, still remains. Well, only the ruins remain really. I imagine it's gonna be more or less the same as we go up, so we're gonna head back down now. But overall, very impressive, very affordable to come here if you guys are interested in coming. It is called Kayakoi Ruins and very close to uh, the Butterfly Valley and Fethiye if you guys are coming down this way. Welcome to Bodrum. So today we have hired a private boat for 150 US dollars to take us out for a sunset along the coastal waters here in beautiful Turkey. So this morning we drove from Fethiye down to Bodrum. It took about roughly three hours along the way and so far it is living up to the expectations. It is our favorite city here so far. So at the moment we're walking through the harbor area which is where all the boats are docked and all the ferry tours are actually leaving from. So if you guys are interested in renting a boat for the day, for one to two hours or for the whole day, this is where you go. So we've now stepped into the Bodrum Underwater Archaeology Museum but it wasn't always a museum. You see, back in the 15th century, this place used to be a castle, but uh, after about 400 years of not being used in the 1960s, this place got renovated into the Underwater Archaeology Museum, and you can see this beautiful landmark out in the distance as soon as you hop off a boat. However, if you're driving into the city, you will see it in the distance as well. I mean, you honestly cannot miss this landmark when you're visiting Bodrum, so we just had to come here and visit it for ourselves. This place cost us 90 liter per person, which is roughly about 11 or 12 US dollars, so not too expensive. However, it is pretty hot out today, so maybe not the best time to be outside. <laughs> Well guys, there's a reason I don't vlog museums very often and that is because after a while it's a bit of same old, same old. The truth of the matter is that this place is not as big as it may seem from the outside. A lot of these areas are closed off so you can't really go into a lot of the places as you would think you could. So there's only like a few areas that are actually open to the public unfortunately and even the top parts aren't even open for you to go up. So far guys, this is definitely my favorite area of Bodrum, walking through the streets. There's a lot of shopping around here to do, there's a lot of cafes and pubs open right now, and some of them are even in these hidden alleys that lead straight over to the water uh, and the cove of uh, Bodrum. It's really, really beautiful. Uh, I would definitely recommend coming out here, especially during the night. Uh, I'm sure it gets pretty lively here in the evenings. So as for restaurants around the beach and around the water, these are the prices you can expect. Turkish pizza is only 25 lira, which is actually pretty good. I would say every restaurant here near the beach is a lot cheaper than what we can get in Bali. Yeah, In I Bali, think so. for something like this, it could be more than like a, a hundred for one meal, mostly. So guys, right as the sun is about to start setting, they put out all these dinner tables. 
And they switch out from loungers to dinner tables for all the guests. All right, guys, we just left dinner. The cost of our dinner for two people with beers, with a beer and a drink, uh, cost us 150 lira, which is roughly about 20 US dollars. Uh, just to give you guys an idea of the prices here. That's on the upper end though because we were in a touristy alley there right along the beach. You can get it much cheaper if you're outside of this uh, touristy alley area where all the shops are though. However, walking through the streets here of Bodrum, uh, there's a lot of Russian speakers here. There's a lot of English speakers here. But most of these, uh, most of the people and tourists visiting here are actually local tourists as well as European tourists as well. Um, if you guys are interested in coming to Bodrum, there are plenty of buses actually, so you don't exactly need a rental car like we did. Um, and I'm sure it's not too expensive either to get our bus. So this morning I came out here to talk to basically all of the boat driver, or boat captains out here. And uh, most of these uh, yachts and boat, private boats are charging about 1500 lira for about a two hour boat, uh, boat tour out on the waters. Uh, for the bigger, uh, medium to bigger size boats, you're gonna be charging about like 2500 to uh, 3500 lira for like a two hour trip. Um, can't imagine what a full day tour is gonna cost you though. How are you? Hello. Welcome. Welcome to Adonia. What's your name? Adi. 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 Alex. Alex and? Quintania. Quintania. Alright. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now that you guys have uh, been introduced to our boat captain here, we are heading out over the water. This, uh, The total cost of this uh, rental was 1500 lira and that was for a two hour sunset tour. So we're heading out now. Believe me guys, it is not easy getting a sailboat out of the uh, dock and out of the marina, especially when the tides are pushing you the other way towards all the other boats that are parked. Let your body move, you gonna make your baby. Now we starting something, gonna know your name. Nothing that we can't do, no that we can't break through. Once it started pumping, pushing through your veins. All right guys, we have arrived at our private little cove beach. The wind is really strong today, like we were uh, motoring against the tide and against the wind, but we've arrived here, it only took us about 20 minutes. So we've got about an hour and a half, two hours before sunset here, and we're gonna go ahead and jump in, swim, and uh, enjoy the beautiful area. We've been on the water here for the last hour and a half. Had such an amazing time. And uh, I I don't know how I landed a drone on top of this boat, by the way. I did not catch it. She didn't catch it. The captain didn't catch it. I landed it on the top of the boat. It somehow. was amazing. And the winds are really strong today, like maybe 18 knots. Like they are very gusty today. It was very difficult landing it. But wow, guys. It's been an incredible day. Yeah. Worth it. I I couldn't believe it. It's been two hours already. I feel like time it's just flies. been five minutes. Yeah, time it's really, flies. It's really amazing to be here. Like it's the best decision ever we, we've ever made so far. Yeah. Bye bye. So guys, the one thing that I did forget to mention, I think the one downside of this is that we only had two hours, meaning that we only had a certain amount of time to get to our location where we were gonna swim in the water. If you're renting this boat for the whole day, I imagine you're gonna be able to hit up a lot more spots, a lot more islands, a lot more beaches that are far more beautiful than this probably. Uh, so we've only hit the tip of the iceberg, literally. Um, so if you guys rent this boat for the whole day, you're gonna have a much, much better experience than we did probably because you'll be hitting uh, far more beautiful beaches.
Monster. Good job! <laughs> I'll just finish. Now Yay! you're finished. <laughs> if you guys are ever coming to Bodrum and you want to do a private boat tour here over the water, he's the friendliest guy, has an amazing personality, and we just had the most incredible time here on the boat. So we will put his information down below if you guys ever want to come to Bodrum and do the boat tour because we loved it. Absolutely worth it. Absolutely, guys. It is a very special day today because I've been waiting a very long time to visit this incredible city here in Turkey. Today we drove four hours this morning. We woke up like at 4 a.m. in the morning from uh, Bodrum and we drove four hours north to a little city town area called Pamukkale. Now if you guys aren't familiar with Pamukkale, what it is most famous for is these mineral deposit, these, these white hills that uh, are just absolutely magical and look something that's completely unreal. Well guys, we're here. Uh, we just bought the tickets. The tickets cost us 110 lira per person, which is just over like $12, I believe. Um, it used to be actually 60 lira per person, so they actually doubled the price, um, which is what I'm finding with most uh, museums and uh, places you're paying tickets for. Um, it is summertime here in Turkey, so I'm, I'm assuming they're taking advantage of the peak season because of uh, people traveling during COVID, but uh, nonetheless, still affordable, um, and we have full access to this beautiful area. So we've taken off our shoes to walk up. Uh, the ground is actually really cold and uh, it's not slippery at all as I would have thought it would have been. So yeah, you're supposed to take your shoes off. Security guy just yelled at somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's actually a lot more people than I expected. There's not too many because it's still pretty early. It's only 8 a.m. in the morning. I assumed it opened at 8 a.m. but it actually opens up much, much earlier. I think roughly at like sunrise for 6 a.m. Wow. And there's a balloon rising over Pamukkale right now. So this whole area is supposed to be filled with water, but it's completely empty. Well, the reality of the situation is it's kind of disappointing because uh, a lot of the pools are completely empty and I'm sure there's nothing that anybody can really do about that. It's just up to Mother Nature, unfortunately. But uh, some of the bigger pools are uh, have some water in them, so we're still trying to get some shots, some photos. But uh, yeah, some of the smaller ones down below uh, are completely empty actually. Another empty pool. When you step on this thing, it feels like you just step on mud. <laughs> so muddy. Hmm. Wow. There's uh, more people at the top now. Looks like more people are coming up here. So we also get access to the antique pools, which I believe you can swim in as well. Well guys, the pools are a no-go. Uh, apparently the ticket you, you get at the entrance doesn't include anything else except for the pools down below. Uh, if you want to go swimming at the antique pool, uh, it costs another 100 liga per person. Um, so it seems like everything else you want to do here is going to cost you extra. I'm honestly actually kind of surprised how many tours are already here. Uh, it's 9 o'clock, we're about to leave and it's getting pretty, pretty busy here. If, if I would have known that this place opens up at 6 a.m. around sunrise, I would have come here much earlier. But unfortunately, because we had a four hour drive from Bodrum, that really wasn't an option. So guys, before coming here today, uh, the expectations were pretty high. 
Yeah, because we were uh, we were thinking that it looked exactly the same as pictures. Yeah, and like all waters <laughs> and nice and cold. Long story short, the YouTubers and all the Instagrammers of the world have made this place pretty famous and have set an expectation that is very very high. And I can't decide for myself whether um, all of that was photoshopped or if we have just terrible luck today. But you but know, it's still good. yeah, it's still a very very beautiful and unique experience. Um, I, you can't really, I don't think you can see this anywhere else in the world. And when you get to the very top, you have just a very beautiful view of the mountains and the, of the yeah. valley and the town um, in front of you. It's, it's really pretty. It really is actually. Yeah. Today we are in Cappadocia and the very first thing we have decided to do was book a ATV tour for sunset because we've already missed the, the uh, balloon rides this morning and uh, we are on the way now to the ATVs. There are a lot of ATVs here, like a lot. Wow, look like I'm about to go in the kitchen. I have to say, this place is super busy. Wow, I look crazy. <laughs> Gentlemen, show your coat. All right, I see him. Uh, my friend, this is your? This one? Yes. Okay. So guys, as you can see today, we are doing ATV tours. Cost of this thing is $27 US per person, and we're doing a sunset track. So we're going all around uh, Cappadocia here for sunset. There are probably gonna be like 40 or 50 people in this group. It's uh, crazy how busy Cappadocia is during peak season of summer. We've arrived at our first stop. The first quarter of the trip was roughly about 10, 15 minute ride through the, it was a very mild ride, let's just say that. Uh, the only issue you have to deal with is dust because it is very, very dusty out here. By the way guys, they do have a lemonade stand, drink stands, some food I think, some snacks up here. All right guys, back on the road we go. Let's go. Alright guys, I think we're in a bit of a traffic jam, but we're pretty much now just going through downtown, through the city, through the streets where all the restaurants are. This is our first basically like four or five hours here in Cappadocia. It's honestly not what I expected. I like this whole town area, I did not expect it to be like this. Um, yeah. I expect it to be a little less developed, I think. But it's very, very touristy. Like there's a lot of people here in peak season of summer. It's definitely not as touristy as Istanbul was. But uh, nonetheless, when you come to Turkey, you must visit Cappadocia. I mean, this is a bucket list item. You have to. Um, so whether it's touristy or not, must come see it for your own eyes uh, because it's just that beautiful. Orange juice. Yeah. We've just ordered uh, watermelon juice, a big one. 
kind of thirsty after this ATV ride. Let's see how much it costs. So the small juices are 10 lira and the big ones are 15, which is two US dollars. Stopped off here. And look at this incredible view. We actually had a bit of an accident, which is why we stopped. <laughs> uh oh. Somebody dropped their phone. Oh my god, guys. We're about to go through a tunnel. Wow. This is gonna be fun. Go, go, go! Oh my god. Can I tell you how difficult that was to vlog? You're welcome! Absolutely incredible. This last stop is the best one. Oh my gosh. Look at all the dust on myself. This is supposed to be black, not white. And my camera is even worse. <laughs> Look at you though. No, you're not as bad as me. It looks like bumpy. This is my private road. <laughs> really? <laughs> this is a cool spot. What's the name of this one? Uh, Sunset Point here. This Sun is Low Valley. Okay, Low Valley. Sundown later we are going back. Yeah. Very uh nice. We're having fun. <laughs> yeah. This is my favorite area going through here. <laughs> Even my hair turns up. <laughs> your, your hair is white? <laughs> Look at my hair! Wow. It's like rambutan! I would really love to know the meaning behind all these. I'm assuming this is like in France where you leave a lock on the bridge. Really cool. Oh, it's the wishing tree. What's your wish? I'll get rich. All right guys, the sun is setting, my shirt's completely dirty, and I need a really long shower, but this was an unforgettable experience. Only for $27 a person, and it lasted about like two and a half hours. So highly recommend you guys do this if you guys plan on coming to Cappadocia. You know, you obviously have to do the balloons, but this comes a close second. Good morning guys, it's a very early start to today's morning. It is 4 a.m. We are here in Cappadocia, and we are about to do the most famous thing you can do here, and that is the hot air balloon rides. One thing we should mention though, is that uh, these balloon rides actually get canceled very, very often. So if you do come to Cappadocia, I would definitely book like two or three nights here in town because more likely or not your your hot air balloon ride is going to get canceled at least once um, if not twice and it's prayer time. We've just driven about 15 minutes into the valleys of Cappadocia and see the sunrise behind me. Wow. 
Hi right, guys, we made it into the balloon. That was actually so incredible to see all the balloons getting blown up and there's so many of them right now. Wow. I hope I don't lose my hair with all the fire. So right now we're 300 meters above the ground and the sun is just beginning to rise over top of those mountains. It's amazing. Honestly guys, the camera does not do this any justice. You just have to see this for your own eyes. Uh, so many balloons up in the sky this morning, beautiful sunrise, and it's not even too cold actually. It was really cold down below because there's no sun yet, but as soon as you get in this balloon, this heat just warms you up. What's Follow the... your name, Titanic. Titanic. <laughs> Titanic, so afraid. <laughs> Crash time. <laughs> Guys, we are so low. You can almost touch the ground. Almost. That guy's really low, though. Okay, guys, we are beginning our descent. That's where we're about to land. You ready? <laughs> it's time to jump out. Yeah. This is a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so the guys are just packing up the balloon right now. We had a 45 minute hot air balloon flight over Cappadocia here in Turkey and it was an unforgettable experience guys. We paid roughly between like 80 to 100 dollars per person for this one. Honestly, I would do it all over again if I could. But we're gonna be off to our next city. Well guys, good morning from Uzengul, I believe is the name, how you pronounce it, Trab Zone. This is an area that we've been waiting to come since, since we flew to Turkey from Indonesia. And it is our very last day here in Turkey and we finally arrived to this beautiful little town located between the valley of these two mountains and a beautiful lake and a mosque right in the middle. It's incredible. I must say guys, the drive up here is very difficult. If you're a first time driver, don't come up here. It's basically a one lane mountain road with two cars that have to pass on each side. It's pretty crazy and very dangerous. However, we're gonna stop off for breakfast here at one of these restaurants here overlooking the valley. Right here? Yeah. If you guys have seen my um, Bandung videos from Indonesia, this place really reminds me of uh, Bandung. It's like a mountain town with very, very mild and cool climates. Also, the, um, a lot of people here speak English. I'm assuming this is a very popular tourist town and you can see it from the amount of people that visit here. Last night we were strolling around the streets and it was just packed. And this town is very small. Um, but there's just so many people <laughs> that are visiting it uh, that it just feels very, very claustrophobic at times. But still, it's got such a beauty to it. So if you guys plan on making this drive up the mountain from Uzungol, um, there's a lot of these little cafes, restaurants with these beautiful lookout points. Um, you can't really miss them <laughs> because it's a one lane road base basically going up the mountain. Um, so you can definitely just stop off at any one of these points and uh, enjoy a beautiful lunch or breakfast with a stunning view of Uzungol in the background. Wow. All right, the food has arrived. From what I know, I think that this is cheese inside and looks like maybe some oil. Oh my God. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my gosh, I, I don't know how to eat this. I'm gonna just put it on bread and see what happens. All right, here we go. This is super difficult. All right, ready? First taste. Mmm, tastes like cheddar cheese. This is a really good cheese. They've melted it down, added some maybe butter or oil, 
And that's really it. I'm assuming you put it on bread, or maybe you just eat it by itself, but I like it. Guys, look at the parking situation here. This is just crazy, and all these taxis are coming up here as well. This uh, little 4x4 here cost us $52 a day here in Trap Zone, by the way. Crap, I don't know how I'm gonna get out of here. Got a bit of a mess here, nobody can get through. Guys, this, the views from above are so beautiful, but this road is just so freaking dangerous. Literally, you gotta deal with the stuff like this the entire way down the mountain and up the mountain. One lane for two cars. It's extremely stressful, especially when you're in a rental car. Got, almost got run over by that lady. We just stopped off for uh, some Turkish coffee here at the cafe across the road. Uh, that cost us uh, 10 lira each, which is about $1.20 US. And uh, just gonna take a walk down this uh, beautiful little pathway near the river, which leads up to the lake. Show you guys a bit of what the town here looks like. So we're currently on the opposite side of the lake where the mosque is behind us. Uh, we're walking through a lot of the shops. They have uh, an amusement park in this area, as well as a lot of little uh, vendors, cafes, where you can buy street food snacks. And <laughs> look at the view behind me. Wow. So beautiful here. It does seem like there's a lot of local tourists here and Middle Eastern tourists. I've heard of uh, a lot of Arabic being spoken here and even some of the menus and uh, street signs are in Arabic as well. Alright guys, it's a few hours later. We've come back out into the streets to uh, find an arcade game to play and get some dinner. I see you. You do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I see you. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. The guy handling the money here just shot that uh, arrow and he literally just hit the bullseye. First shot without even looking. That was crazy. He's like, look at me. <laughs> Literally. Uh oh. This is Turkish models. Turkish? Turkish okay. uh, semi auto. Oh, semi auto. Oh my yeah. god. That's gonna take me like five minutes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Nice! Missed it though. Wow! Woo! Close. By the way guys, so far, uh, everyone we've spoken to here in uh, Uzengol has had really good English. At least communication wise, you're gonna have no problem talking to people here if uh, English is your only language. You said uh, 5 or 10? 10. 10, okay. Wow. Uh, you just kind of chuck it. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> Almost. Oh! What? You got it! I can kill you now. <laughs> we just found that axe throwing game. Uh, it cost us 20 liters for 10 throws. Actually pretty difficult to throw an axe, uh, especially hitting it on the target as well. Throwing it just at that right time, but she was the only one that hit it. Just <laughs> it, once though. She hit the target. I, I didn't get any. I got zero. Cheesy. Cheesy. You are so cheesy! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! You know how dangerous this is? When I first came to Indonesia and got martabak, I was just like, holy crap, I'm gonna eat this stuff every day, I'm gonna get so fat. I feel the same thing about kunefe. If I lived in in uh, Turkey, 
This would be like my martabak in Indonesia. I would be getting this stuff every week and I would probably get so fat. <laughs> Alright guys, we are back at the mosque right behind us here to finish off the video. We're having an amazing time here in Trabzon and Uzungul. Guys, if you guys ever come through this area in the, in the northeast part of Turkey, that you're gonna have an amazing time. We've been staying here for the last two days. Really beautiful place. You have a huge lake right behind, as well as a beautiful mosque. A lot of uh, amazing people, really friendly people, and amazing food nonetheless. You will really enjoy your time here. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like. And if you made it to the very end of the video, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, bye.